Good, good evening, evening, teacher. Good evening, Katya. Good evening to every one of you guys. Thank you so much for always being there and being punctual. That's very responsible. As I always tell you, I do appreciate that. And well, so we're expecting your classmates to join the meeting in some minutes, probably. So, um, well, guys, today is going to be our 15th class and we're almost done which means that we will only have another class tomorrow and that's going to be it. So, um, well, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say goodbye since now, but I mean, it was also a pleasure to, to share my knowledge with you. So, um, well, as usual, guys, I'm going to ask you questions regarding, you know, oh, uh, regarding to, you know, to regarding to the last topic that we saw yesterday, we only saw the differences that we have between, uh, you know, between the simple past and the present perfect. Yesterday, we tried to do some exercises in which some of them were a little bit confusing for you. Well, you said that that was confusing, but I mean, not difficult. We're, we're gonna say like that. It's, just uh, a matter of trying to pay attention to the sentences, you know, like try to verify the context we're talking about. And so that's gonna help us like, kind of understand the context and try to understand if we have to use the simple past or the present perfect. Now, can someone mention to me what, what is one of the differences that we have between the simple past and the present perfect? Can someone mention at least one? Or how do you identify the present perfect from the simple past? How would you be able to identify that? Expression of time, teacher. The past with the action. Expression of time with the, having the action and the auxiliary have or has. Okay, yeah, that's going to be something that is going to help us to, you know, to know some differences about it. And, but also, we have some keywords. Can someone tell me one of the keywords that we have uh, for the simple past? Ever, never. Yesterday. Ever. Yes, you got confused, Anna, because those are for. I ah, know, present person. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The simple past yesterday. Uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> you lost it. You lost it. Ago, teacher. Ago, yes. Ago. Uh, the last year. Last year. Last month. And last I, month, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those. Those are some keywords that are going to help us to understand a little bit about simple past. Uh, Anna already mentioned some of the expressions or the keywords that we use in present perfect. So it's not, um, I mean, there's, there's not a big difference. I mean, some of them automatically, once you see them, you will identify automatically that it is whether the simple present, I, I mean, the present perfect or the simple past. Now, let me try to share uh, one of the exercises that we supposed to do or to finish yesterday, but we couldn't. So today, because you finished that yesterday, I guess. So we're going to have that. Let me check. All right, just let me share that with you. So. By the way, are you guys ready for the exam? You're not, I don't believe you. All right, just let me see. Oh my God, doesn't want to go, okay, there we go. All right, so can everyone see the exercise we have there? Can, can you see it? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Now, let's see. According to sentence number one, 
what is the expression that is telling you the time or in, in which tense do you have to use in the first one? Yes. Simple past, teacher. Why, Katia? Uh, because is the is the event in the past for last night. Last night is giving us the idea of the simple past. So automatically we know that since we have last night, we're going to use simple past. So my question for you, okay, is, um, let me see. It is, hello, it is, how are you today? So, so teacher. Why so, so why not good? Are you tired? Because I really have a hair oh. all day. Oh my God, I can't imagine, that's that's horrible. So um, I'm sorry for asking you, but you have a headache, but do you know what is the past form of the bird go? Uh, went. Went, thank you very much. So okay. the first one we're going to say, we went to the restaurant last night. Thank you very much. Now. What about number two? You guys have any idea if we're going to use simple past or present perfect? Teacher is present perfect. Why, Katya? Why do you think so? Because, because uh, in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Try to do it in Spanish then. Because say I haven't, I haven't seen. I think I haven't there for age because for age for años. Mm -hmm. All right. That's, thank you very much, Katya. Let's see. Okay, teacher. Does, does anyone else have any other opinion or a different opinion from what Katya said, or do you all guys agree to what she said? Teacher. Teacher. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, two. <laughs> okay, so I, she gave I the I think it's mm -hmm. present perfect because it is not a specific period of time. It is uh, it, it is not a, something specific. The, exactly. the sentence is talking about a period of time. So I think it's present perfect. Perfect, perfect. So Katya and you had different opinions, but we all agree in one thing, that we are referring to the present perfect because we don't have something specifically or there's not a specific period of time. So thank you so much, Arabin and Katya, for giving us your opinions, which were completely right. Now, let me see Elmer. We already know that we have to use present perfect. Now, with the verb that we have in purple in parentheses, how will be the final result for sentence number two? Which is the final result? The sentence I haven't be there for again. Be? Being, being. Being, okay. Excellent. I haven't or I have not been there for ages. Okay. Now, Nidia. Nidia. Uh, in number three, what do you think? Are we going to use present perfect or simple past? This is some. Uh... Present perfect. Present perfect. Okay, thank you very much for your opinion. Does anyone else have a different or has a different opinion about what she said? For me, teacher, it's a, a simple past. Why do you think so? Because this uh, last summer is a, a finished activity. Excellent. Do you see? So what I, I really don't understand why yesterday you were saying that the exercises were difficult. 
As you can see, the only thing that we have to do is to analyze. Analyze the sentence and the same sentence is going to give us the answer. Now, Carlos Regalado. What is the past form of the verb spend? Do you have any idea or no? Do you have an idea? Spend. Can, can you spell it for me? Spending. Spell it. Spell it. Can you spell it? Because I really don't, don't know if you're saying that correctly. Spending. Oh, so it doesn't change. No cambio. It doesn't change. <clears throat> it's okay if you don't know it, Carlo. It's okay. Do you know it or no? No. You don't have any idea. No idea. Okay, so we're going to go with uh, Ingrid. Any idea about the past form of the verb spend? I think S P E N D S. N D S. Okay. Cecilia Hernandez, what about you? What do you think? What is the past form of the verb spend? Is spent um, with T, the Finnish. Can you spell it? No. Is spent. No, can you spell? Puedes deletrearlo. Can you spell? Uh, S P S P E N D N T. T, T as in tomato, that's what you mean? Yes. Okay, now we know already the past form. So Vidal, if we already know that the past form of the verb spend is spent, how would it be the final result for sentence number three? What is the final result number three? Victor. Spend this last summer holiday in the country. Okay, you I heard I'm I don't know if I'm mistaken, but I heard spend that. So we don't say spend that. we say spend because we're ready now. So we say Hector spent his last summer holiday in the country. Uh, can, you, can you please turn your microphone off? Thank you. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. Now, uh, let me see, Eri, Bin, you there? Yes, teacher. All right, so go ahead and help me with number four. James. Uh, learned, all the, learned all the rules by heart. Okay, so what do we do with the bird? Learn. <laughs> Solo lo puse en pasado simple. Learn. And why do you think it is in or should be in past? Eh, porque lo estoy traduciendo en la mente y, y me resulta más. No sé, me resulta mejor en pasado simple que en presente simple. Que en, que en presente perfecto. And of course, your mind is correct. Why? Because if we say learned all the rules by heart, I mean, he learned that already. Now, by the present, he already knows that. So that's right. So in the number four, we're, we have to use simple past. Si es que no veo palabras clave, pero me resulta mejor así en pasado yes. simple. 
Yeah, sometimes it's by, by the logic. Sometimes it's, it's not that we all the time that we're going to have expressions, you know, like, or keywords. It's not always, but uh, it's, it's really fine what you did. I mean, your, your, your mind helps you. So, guys, uh, we're also going to have a practice today about the verbs because yesterday I was checking the practice that we have. And let me tell you that some of you, well, still having a lot of issues with the verbs. Still, some of you, not all of you, some of you. So today, as I said yesterday, today we're going to have uh, some expressions that we're going to try to understand that we use in present perfect. So guys, if you have any question today regarding to any of the topics that we have seen throughout the module, ask the questions because tomorrow, remember, we have the exam. So tomorrow you won't be able to ask me. No. Mañana todo se me va a olvidar automatically. So I won't remember anything. So it's like, I, I don't know English. That's what I'm gonna say. So, you know? So if you have questions, ask the questions today, not tomorrow, okay? So uh, we're gonna go with today's topic, as I said, and we're gonna have expressions used in present perfect. We got, uh, we kind of introduced a little bit, some of them yesterday. And I remember that someone asked me about, oh, I guess Maritza was who, at, who asked me, I'm sorry, about uh, one of those expressions that we had yesterday. So just let me, okay. All right, so there we go. Um, just let me get the painter, pointer here, okay. So once again, just as a reminder, a reminder for you, present perfect. And let me let me tell you that the reason that I keep on repeating and repeating the auxiliaries is because cuando estamos en un examen, hasta esta cosa simple como el auxiliar se nos olvida. Y vamos a usar el auxiliar has para cuando tengo we, porque se nos olvida. And that's Completely understandable, because when you are in an exam, you have a little bit of pressure. So it's not the same just listening to the class than being in an exam. That's not the same thing. So that's why I keep on repeating and repeating the same thing. So you have a clear idea for tomorrow that the auxiliaries in present perfect are have and has, depending on the subject or pronoun. Okay, so let's move on. <clears throat> As it says here, the present perfect is used with the following time expressions. Just, always, already, yet, ever, never, since, for, lately, and recently. Let me see how you pronounce that. Let me see, Carlos Regalado, go ahead. Make the pronunciation of all of them, please. Just. 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 Always. 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 Already. Already. Yet. Yet. Mm -hmm. Never. Mm -hmm. Never. Sin. Since. For. Mm -hmm. Lately. Mm -hmm. Recently. Lately and recently. Okay. Lately, recently. So, Nidia, go ahead, please. <laughs> Just. Always. Already. Ever. Never. Science. Since. For. Since. For. Lady. Lately. Lately. Or recently. 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 Okay, Katia, go ahead. Okay, teacher. Just. Always. Already. Yet. Ever. Never, since, for, lately, recently. 
Recently. Recently. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Recently. Ana Noemi, go ahead. Okay, teacher. Just always already yet ever never since for lately recent recently. Thank you very much, Joaquin. Go ahead. <clears throat> Just always already yet ever never since things since for lately the result recently recently okay now Ivan, go ahead I'm pretty sure that you already know how to do that so let's go just always already yet ever never since for lately recently thank you very much maritza just always already yet ever never since for lately recently thank you very much elba carolina yes always Already, yet, ever, never, seen, or, after, recently. Thank you very much, Ingrid Jamilet. Just, always, already, yet, ever, never, since, for, lately, recently. Andrea Mariel. Just, always, already, yet, ever, never, since, for, literally, recently. Recently. Uh, Cecilia Hernandez. Just, always, already, yet, ever, never, Things for lately, Late recently. lately, recently. Thank you very much, Edith Araceli. Just always already, yet ever, never, since for lately, recently, recently, recently. Okay, Alberto Enrique. Just always already yet ever never since for lately recently. Thank you very much, Carmen Guadalupe. Hot hours. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Say say the first one again. Just, uh, just, 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 I already get ever, never, seat for, um, lately, lately, recently, recently, okay, Ana Mayora, go ahead, just, always, ready, Already, yet, ever, never, things for lately, recently. Thank you very much. And go with Melvin Jose. Hola. Yes, Melvin. Yes, always, already, yet. Ever, never, since, for, lady, recently. Thank you very much. And the last one, Valentin Montesino. Go ahead. Valentin. Teacher, voy en en tráfico, pero se escucha una gran bulla. Oh, it's okay. So it it's okay. So then we can go with Iris, because I see that you didn't participate. So Iris, go ahead. Yes. 
always, already, yet, ever, never, seen, for, lately, recently. Elmer, did you did you say that? No, teacher. Okay, let's go, Elmer. <clears throat> Just, always, already, yet, ever, never, since, for, lately, recently. 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 Okay, so those guys are uh, time expressions that we are going to use with the present perfect. They are not difficult to use. They are really easy and you don't have to complicate that much. We are going to go one by one. I will show you some examples that are going to help you to understand how to use it. But first of all, we're going to have like um, an example, let's say, of a past action when the time isn't finished using, of course, the present perfect. We have the example that says, I have been to the circus twice this week. We're obviously talking about a past action, but this past action isn't finished. Why do you think that we say that isn't finished? Does any one of you have any idea why do we say that this action isn't finished yet? No, not at all. Maybe because she's talking about this week, but this week, but it it is it is not telling us that this week is already finished. Exactly. This week, this mm -hmm. week could be could be in Thursday, in Thursday, or could be Friday. There you go. Yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. I mean, when we say this week. We're talking obviously about this week, but we don't know what specifically the, the day we're talking about. So we don't have a defined time or a defined day, which is giving us the idea about something specifically. So that's the reason why we say that we, uh, the time isn't finished on this action. Okay, so let's see. And uh, we have another one that we use, and here we're using one of the expressions already. It says that we use the to express a past action or period of time that isn't finished, and it's there when the time isn't finished, when we are going to use those expressions, the ones that we just read. So we have, you have already had six cakes. So we have the example here. I mean, this is just a general introduction about the, the expressions that we read before. We're gonna to go to the next slide and here you have a specifically all the ones that we just read. So as you can see, we have then the position where you have to put every one of them and of course some examples. Now, let me see, um, Arabin, can you please go ahead and help me with number one? I mean, the word, the position and example all together. Okay. Ever position before the main verb. Example, have you ever met a famous person? Thank you very much. So every single time that we use the word ever is like if we're saying alguna vez. It's like if we say, have you ever met a famous person? Has conocido alguna vez una persona famosa? Have you ever met a famous person? So what is the position? The position, it says that it's going to be before the main verb. So as you can see, it's right here before the main verb. Can I, can I, can I use that in an answer? If I say, for example, or in a sentence, you have ever met a famous person? Will that be possible? Do you think that that sound correct when you say that? Does it sound correct? If I say, you have ever met a famous person? Not, I don't not think so. Because the mm -hmm. auxiliary is first, how? 
I mean, yes, yes, we understand that. But I mean, what I was saying is that if we can, if you think that we can use the word ever when we have an affirmative sentence, for if I say, if someone asks me the question, have you ever met a famous person? What if I say, yes, I have ever met a famous person? Not to chair, I don't think that is correct. Yeah, that's, that's not correct, actually. We cannot use the word ever in an answer. We only, or mostly, we're going to use it in questions. When we have a question like the one that we have on the example. So most of the time is going to be four questions. Keep that in mind. So can I have a volunteer for number two? Melvin, it's, it's, a, okay, let's go, Melvin, let's try, because it's a little bit difficult to listen to you, it's like. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Before the main part or at the end of the session. Uh-huh. He, he has a three, three big matches. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. He has been to three big matches already. Thank you very much. So let me read it again in case the other ones didn't listen to what he said. We have the word already. What is the position that we, or what's the exact position that we're going to use before the main verb or at the end of the sentence? So which means that this word already, we can move it either in the middle of that or at the end. And the meaning will still be the same. So if I say, he has already been to three big matches. It will be the same if I say he has been to three matches or to three big matches already. So you see, I can move that or I can put it on the middle between the auxiliary and the main verb, or I can move it at the end. So he has been to three big matches already. So we're saying exactly the same thing. It doesn't, it doesn't change the meaning if I put it on the middle or if I put it at the end. This meaning will still be the same. Okay, are you guys following me? Si todos estamos entendiendo? Yes, teacher. Perfect. So now, can I have a volunteer for the third one? Aye, teacher. Go ahead, please. Just be position before the main verb example i have just got back from italy okay so once again or if you can notice we have like a pattern tenemos como un patrón most of them are going to be placed right in the middle between the auxiliary and the main verb so just is going to be the same thing. So it's right between the auxiliary and the main verb. So we have the example, I have just got back from early. When you listen to that sentence, guys, what do you think or what do you understand by that? I have just got back from Italy. Justamente acabo de regresar de Italia. We can say something like that. Yeah, and that will be, that will be one option. Mm -hmm. Another one. Does anyone have any other opinion or do you guys agree with what Noemi said? Justo he regresado de Italia. Yeah, we can say that as well. So we have, uh, the, I mean, the meaning is either to what Anna said and your uh, your opinion, right? So that's going to be pretty much uh, the meaning of the word just. So is there any question that you might have at this moment, guys? It's been clear. Mm. Well, I hope so. So let's go with the next one. Maritza, can you please go ahead and help me with the next one? Okay. Jet. Positions at the end of a sentence. Mm -hmm. Sentence. Mm -hmm. Example. 
They haven't been abroad yet. Okay. There's one characteristic about this word yet is that most of, I mean, if you can see here, uh, we got to be a little bit careful on that because most of the time we pronounce it as jet, like, like the sound of the letter Y. But in this one, what we have to do is that in phonetic, we change the letter uh, Y for the sound of the letter I and we say yet. That's what we do. Yet. Yet. Yeah, no jet. Because if you say jet, it's like, you know, the, the mean of transportation. It's pretty much like that. So we have to pay attention to that. This one, another characteristic that we have is that most of the time we're going to use it when we have the negative form. So as you can see here, we say they haven't been abroad yet. So when I have the positive, I'm going to use already. Because already is pretty much the same as yet. With the difference is that already I use it for positives and yet I use it for negatives. Try, sure. Meaning the same thing, yes. Yet es como decir todavía. Todavía, aún, o ya. Okay, thank you. All right, so. Please keep that in mind. No decimos jet, porque jet es como un jet de esos eh, que, que andan en el mar o creo, I guess, on, on the sea. Jet. <laughs> is, is it on the sea? Jet or? ski. Jet ski. Okay. Oh, yeah, it can be in like a jet ski, something like that. So we have to be careful there. Because jet, that's a jet. So this one is yet. It, it's, it's jet. pretty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eh, de hecho, tengo entendido que siempre la Y se va a pronunciar así, por ejemplo, con yellow, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, Ajá, siempre of... se pronuncia A como, como si fuera the letter I. Ajá. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, most of the time, most of the time is pronounced like that. For example, we also make the mistake of saying yes, but it's yes. Yes. Of course, when we are pronouncing or, or why we're speaking, we don't listen to that specific sound. It's como que dijéramos e e teacher. Yes. Yeah, no, no. sound like that. Yes. Eh. Yeah, e something like that. E oh. Yeah, but well, I mean, when we're speaking, we don't listen to the sound and we don't pay too much attention to that. But of course, it's necessary that we all know uh, that information. Okay. So uh, let's go with the next one. Uh, Carlos Regalado, can you please go ahead and help me with that? Never mm -hmm. position um, before before the man bear. Mm -hmm. Example. Example. She has never won a prize. Price. Price. Okay. okay. That one I'm not going to explain that much because you already know that. Every one of you. Those are, uh, son palabras muy conocidas for every one of us. So I'm not going to talk that much about never because you already know what never means. The only thing that I'm going to say is the position, the exact position that we have to remember. Never, once again, is going to be placed between the auxiliary and the main verb. Right. Teacher. Right. 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 Price is called, it's like uh, un premio. Oh, okay. uh, premio. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So uh, sometimes we make the mistakes of saying she never has won, but that's not how we say it. We will always place the word between the auxiliary and the main verb. That's the only thing that we have to keep in mind. Okay. So, Iris, go ahead and help me with the next one. Four. Mm -hmm. Position. Before a time period, period, a year, period, a year, three day, two hour. Uh -huh. Example: He has been to a big match for year. For years, okay. For years. So we have this one for is going to be used when we refer to a time period, such as a year, three days, two hours, and we have the example. He hasn't been to a big match for years. 
we already know what's the meaning of for. So I'm not going to focus that much on that. This one, uh, it doesn't have like a, a specific uh, placement or a specific position, but what, we're, what we can say is that it always going to be before a time period. But within the sentence, there's not a specific place where you have to put it. The only thing that you have to remember is that it will always be before a time period. That's it. Teacher, when I mean match. Match is left yeah. forward. That's the match. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna go with the next one and I will need um, Andrea Mariel, go ahead, please. Thanks. Before a since, sorry. Before a point in time. Example, I have been abroad every year since 2003. Okay. So when we say, thank you very much. So when we say a point in the time, is that we're talking about a specific period of time. For example, uh, when we say since. We say desde, that's what it means, desde. So when, when we talk in the example, we say I have been abroad every year since 2003. You see, desde el 2003, this person has been abroad every single year. So when we, have, when we want to say or to use since, we have to know that we're going to use it before a point in the time or in a specific time, let's say that. Uh, we have some examples such as 2010, five o'clock, this morning, this afternoon, this evening. Because for example, you can say, I have eaten pupusas since, uh, since I was a child. You see, I'm talking, when I say since I was a child, I'm talking about a point or an, uh, something and the time and in during my timeline, that's what I mean. So um, is there any question that you might have at the moment or is something very understandable? Is it understandable for you all? Are you all understanding what I'm trying to say or is there any doubt or something that you want me to explain you once again? No, are we okay? So if we're okay, so I will need Cecilia Hernandez for the last one. How long position at the be beginning of mm -hmm. a question? Mm -hmm. Example, how long have you known Paul? Have you known, have you known Paul? So this one, guys, how long it is a WH question that we are going to use to know hace cuánto. That's what it means. How long have you known Paul? Hace cuánto conoces o has conocido a Paul? O por cuánto tiempo? We're talking about a length. So do you remember that on the first class we saw the WH questions? or in the second one or in the third one. I really don't remember, but it was either the first one or the second one. Do you guys remember that we saw how long? Yes, teacher. All right, so I'm not going to focus that much on that because you have already an idea about what I'm talking about. So uh, once again, questions. No questions at all. Teacher, mm -hmm. is yet is negative uh, auxiliary uh, or, uh, or do you use his all? No, no, no. I, most of the time it's going to be used when the auxiliary or the sentence is in negative because the meaning of already and yet is pretty similar. If, if not, we can say that is the, the same. But the difference between one and another is that already you use it most of the time for uh, positive sentences and yet you're going to use it for negative sentences most of the time. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, so any other questions so far? If there's no questions, we're going to move on directly to the exercises, okay? 
No questions at all? Teacher, it just specific yes. and no, just understand them. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just, just. Uh, what did I say about what? You, the meaning you mean? Yeah, but oh. the, uh, when did you use the just specific? Uh, yeah. I mean, we use it when, uh, I mean, I, I'm trying a hard time to understand what you're, what you're trying me, trying to tell me. En el traductor, yo es solo, pero cuando tendría que, o sea, si es este, si yo quiero traducir esa palabra, no sería solo. No. O sea, que regresa a Italia. No, 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 no. It's like justo, that's what uh, arriving, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was arriving who said justo. Uh, so that's that's pretty similar. Uh, Anna said something. Do you guys remember what you said? Because I really don't remember. But th those. Uh, Justamente. I'm sorry? Justamente dije. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the closer uh, translation that we can give to the word just. But um, sometimes um, the translator translated, uh, I mean, very pretty obvious and translated it as uh, solo. But that's not really the meaning that we have in English. We can use either justamente as Anna said, or we can use justo. Because if I say I have just got back from Italy, justo acabo de llegar o de regresar de Italia. So it's not only uh, like, si queremos decir solo, it's like only. That's the one that we use when we refer to that word, not just. Is it a little bit clear for you, Iris? Yes, teacher, I have the confusion, but the, the, cuando lo traducí, decía solo, por eso era mi, mi confusión. Yeah, yeah, the translator, and uh, I mean, it's not good to use translator sometimes. So, okay. but I mean, so, if there's no any other question, guys, we're going to go directly to the exercises, and this time it's not difficult, because what you have to do there is just to use, of course, the present perfect. And uh, so just take a screenshot of that or a picture, and then we're going to move on to number two, because we just have two in this case. So you let me know when you're done so I can move on to the next one. Next one, teacher. Thank you very much. Next teacher. Actually, we just have two. So that's it. So we just have two for today. So I'm going to create the uh, breakout rooms and I will need every one of you to go there. I do appreciate guys the fact that I have seen some of you speaking in English or at least trying to speak in English while you are participating or while uh, you are resolving these exercises. The other ones, I know that it might be a little bit complicated for you, but try to do it. I mean, try to speak English as much as you can. Is that, that's what we are here for. So let's go ahead and join your rooms, please. And I will be checking every one of you there.
It is what happened. Couldn't you access to to the to the group? You couldn't. So just let me go ahead and try to move you to another one. Let's see. Oh, teacher. Let's let's see now. Okay. Decía que creo que en the first one, I think, I think, I'm not really sure. Um, this verb not change, but I don't really not sure, you know. I am not sure. It. Me neither. I'm not sure. It has. It has. It I has. It has never snowed. Like that. It has never. Yes. The night is I. Hello, I have number five. She never went. Oh. What? He do. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Never. Go. Never to Australia. Never. To Australia. You go number, number. Perdón, queda never, never go to Australia. Mm, yes. Okay. 
siguiente. Number five. You have you are you done that. Yeah. I K E M. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, number seven. Okay. Seven is they pay. <laughs> For everything, everything. They pay it. They pay it. It's regular verb. Irregular or regular? Regular. Mm. Regular. Regular. Re regular. Ah, okay. It's mm. only agregar ed. Mm, no. no, no. I'm sorry. No. It's paid. It's P-A-I-D. The Finnish A-D. 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 Sorry, sorry. A-D. Change the the Y for E for I. And a fight. No, and a okay. zip. Number six, my buy it and it house. Mm -hmm. Buy. Buy. buy it and it house. Mm -hmm. uh, Bow. Buy it. Three. Hi. Creo que queda boat. Porque dice boat. Uh, Mari compró una mm -hmm. nueva casa. Yes. ¿Verdad? We're just gonna wait your classmates to come back to the main session because I see some of them are still on on their groups. So we're just gonna wait for them. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, so everyone is going to come back right now. All right, so, um, well, uh, these exercises, guy. Yeah, I, I have a question, teacher. Yes, what's your question? In the first slide, uh, we found some sentences that uh, we, we were confused because mm -hmm. we thought that mm -hmm. most of them we can use both uh, times, simple mm -hmm. past and present perfect. Uh, For example, the last one, the key, mm -hmm. we can say the kids, the kids ha has grown so much and the kids grew so much. Uh, yes, I mean, uh, there is a slightly, a slightly difference or very slight difference when, when, when we use either one of them, because um, it, we cannot use both. That's, that's, I mean, it's pretty understandable what you said, the kids, kids have grown so much. When we say that, automatically what we're doing or what we're saying is that we don't know or we don't have a specific time or we don't exactly know uh, within the period of time when they grew. But when we say the, uh, uh, the kids grew so much, we can also say that, I mean, um, uh, it's not it's not that you specifically had to use one tense. The practice was about using present perfect, but of course you can use either present perfect or simple past in some situations or in some sentences. Both of them are going to be correct. So that's so the problem. In this case, depends on the context. In uh, the context, obviously. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's that's it. The context. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, the last uh, thing that I'm going to say is that uh, tomorrow it's kind of mandatory for you to be there. I mean, we have the, the exam for tomorrow and I need everyone to be ready. I mean, it's not going to be that difficult. Of course, it will it will involve it involves everything like pretty much all the time throughout the module. So since now, I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. And that's going to be all for today, guys. So see you guys tomorrow. Yes. Hey, the exam va a venir algo parecido a lo que nos acaba de poner. And there's some exercises which are pretty similar, but um, the exam will be about most of the topics that we, uh, we have seen throughout the module. Okay, teacher. Yeah, some of them are not going to be included. Some others will be there. For example, present perfect and simple past. That's for sure that is going to be there. For sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Um, well, that's, that's going to be all, guys, for today. So, see you tomorrow, okay? Have a good night. Bye, teacher. Okay. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. See, you see you tomorrow. Bye.